I'm Jenny Brown. Welcome to our weekly Vitalet Mortgage Market Update. I hope you're all keeping incredibly well and absolutely enjoying this glorious weather. What is going on, eh? Um, in terms of what we have for you this week, we've got our usual rundown of lender changes. Um, before I started to record this video, I was thinking, God, I'm not sure there's that much to talk to you about, but actually I'm just going through the list of updates we've had in the last week and actually there's a fair bit to cover off as always. And then we're going to be going into a overview of landlord trends by region as shared by data from the mortgage work. So lots of great things to cover off with you this week. So the Coventry have made some rate reductions across their product set. Now the Coventry have two um, ranges of products. They have products for what they class as non-portfolio landlords and then a separate set of products for portfolio landlords. Um, and these would be people with four or more mortgage buy to net properties in case you're wondering. Now the rates have come down and their pricing is now starting from an incredibly competitive 1.89% for non-portfolio and 2.15% for portfolio landlords. Now um, the Coventry have not only just some really great pricing but they also have some really um, nice features. So some of their products as an example what they call their flexible fixed range. So what this means is that you can take a two or a five year fixed rate with no early repayment charges which is really really good. So what we often get is people who um, are struggling on the rental calculations so the two and th uh, sorry variable rate products aren't working for them but they desperately want a product which offers them um, full flexibility you know for example they're not sure if they're going to keep the property um, for much longer than say 12 months so they don't want to be locked in um, on a product and if you look at the um, no ERC products across the rest of the market they tend to be variable rates which means that you have the more onerous rental calculation whereas with Coventry you can take a five-year fixed rate with no early repayment charges enjoy the favorable rental calculation that comes with that and actually the rates are really really good as well so really solid offering from the Coventry I'm a huge fan of theirs I think it's fair to say that as a lender they do what they do really really well but there's no greyness with them you know you either fit or you don't fit but there's no kind of um you know by exception or that kind of stuff so who is a coventry borrower so first of all um the maximum number of properties you can have in the background with the coventry is 10. now interestingly and this is very unique they do ignore anything that you have in a limited company so if you had a couple of properties in your own name but actually your the rest of your portfolio is in a limited company you would still fit on their non-portfolio products which are really good um, there's no minimum income requirement. They're very happy to enter um, older, older applicants. That's no problem too. So a really, really solid offering with some really fantastic rates and um, features within those rates from the Coventry this week. Foundation Home Loans have made some reductions across their product range and their pricing is now starting from 2.99%. Um, this is particularly competitive in the limited company space where they're very, very happy to play. Um, they will enter individuals and limited companies. Um, so yeah, really, really good pricing and the 2.99 is fixed for five years as well, so very, very good. Now, in terms of foundation home loans and who is a foundation home loans borrower, um, in the individual space, you would really go to foundation home loans if you had a large portfolio of properties um, and you couldn't get it through with the more vanilla high street style lenders. Um, in the limited company space, um, they're very happy to lend to um, companies which are sort of straightforward structures. They can also um, get their heads around the more um, straightforward layered company um, structures as well. Um, no minimum income requirement, no maximum number of properties in the background. Um, and also again, very happy to lend to older applicants. Um, as a lender, they have had some, um, I think it's fair to say, struggles with servicing at the moment. They're absolutely bombarded with applications in the run-up to stamp duty holiday ending. Um, so they are a little bit slow. So they're certainly not a lender I'd want to um, recommend to you if you're looking to move things on a pace. Um, but actually, if you have got some time on your hands, um, the offering that they've brought to the market in the last um, seven days in terms of the rate reductions is actually incredibly good. The Nottingham have made some reductions to their limited company pricing and their rates now start from 2.9% on two year fixed. Um, now with Nottingham, the arrangement fees on their products are flat, so 999 or zero or you know other variations of that, but really, really competitive product offering, particularly in the limited company space. Now look, in terms of the Nottingham, I think um, I would describe them as probably one of the most vanilla lenders in the limited company space. So they're looking for really, really um, almost high street style deals with a limited company wrapper around it. But if you fit within that criteria, their pricing is incredibly good. 
So um, in terms of the limited company structure, they're looking for clean SPVs, no layered companies. Um, one person needs to earn at least £25,000. If that person does not earn up £25,000, um, then between two applicants, you have to earn £40,000. Um, when I was looking at their criteria, I wanted to try and glean some sort of unique points that I could share with you. Um, being really candid, um, there weren't any. Their product offering is so, so clean. They're not looking for... Um, any unusual property types, they're not looking for ex-local authority flats, high rises or anything like that but what they will do is accept DSS tenants um, but like I say you know, you know the majority of um, buy to debt mortgage transactions really do fit in the very kind of vanilla end of the market and so if you are looking at a very very clean straightforward transaction um, which happens to be in a limited company um, structure then these could be a fantastic option for you. NatWest have made some changes to their lending criteria. So what they have done is remove their minimum income requirement for all applicants. Um, so previously NatWest did want you to be earning at least £25,000 per year. That could not be from um, rental income. It had to be um, additional to any rental profit that you may have. Um, but they've removed that requirement now. So there's a no minimum income requirement, which puts them um, in the same kind of category as the Mortgage Works, the Coventry, um, BM Solutions, those kinds of lenders. Now, look, in terms of NatWest as a lender, we don't talk about them very often um, just because they don't really make a huge amount of changes to their product offering. Their criteria has stayed very static for a very long period of time. Um, so a bit of a background on them as a lender. So first of all, they are only looking to lend to individuals, no limited companies. They are not looking to lend to people with large portfolios by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, realistically, if you've got more than four buy to and that West really aren't going to be the right lender for you. What they tend to do is look at... Um, the case is an overall look at your overall indebtedness across your whole portfolio and they tend to get quite nervous for those people who have the larger portfolio so realistically this is for those guys with one or two buy to lets now um, in terms of their lending policy they have got a couple of things that i think they are super super good at um, particularly in relation to property types so um, if you said to me, um, you know, I've got a, a flat which is above a, you know, a, a takeaway, a fast food takeaway, which is the best lender for this, hands down, absolutely, NatWest comes to mind. They're very, very good at ex-local authority, um, concrete construction, deck access, short leases, like I say, flats over commercial. So those kind of more... Um, gritty properties which a lot of lenders aren't comfortable coming to NatWest will lend on those properties you know in, in the main most of the times so they're very very good there and their rates are really competitive as well um, the pricing is very very good they do on remortgages have free valuations and free legals um, flat arrangement fees and pricing starting from a brilliant 1.6 percent so if you can get in with NatWest they're a brilliant lender um, but like I say their appetite to lend um, to the professional landlord is you know non-existent so yeah but great to see that they've made some changes to their criteria nonetheless and I do genuinely hope that going forward NatWest continue to make changes like this and really open their um, offering up to um, you know landlords with more than just a couple of properties. Now the Mortgage Works have released their regional snapshot report which covers quarter one of 2020, 20, sorry 2021. Um, now um, the reason I particularly like the Mortgage Works reports that they released is this is data that is derived from landlords. They do lots of surveys, they invest god knows how much money um, using market research companies to go out and speak to landlords to find out what they're up to and how they're feeling and I always think it makes really really interesting reading. Now the regional snapshot Snapshot report really just talks about various um, kind of um, thoughts and sentiments that landlords have across various kind of um, elements of letting property. So what they do is they um, measure their sentiment in terms of what they call five key indicators and this is landlords expectations over the coming three months and this covers off rental yields and um, prospects for their own letting business, um, the possibility of capital gains to an increase essentially on value on their properties um, they talk about the UK private rental sector as a whole, their confidence in that, and also the UK financial market. Now, when they produce these reports, they first of all start them off with an, over, um, an overview of the market as a whole, and then they go on to each region. And I'm going to cover off each region individually, um, because I think it does make some really interesting reading. But just to kind of give you the overview, they've said that quarter one sees level of landlord confidence significantly higher across all five key optimism indicators um, versus the start of the pandemic a year ago. 
All optimism indicators are now at their highest levels since quarter two 2018, with the exception of prospects for the UK's financial markets. Um, they go on to say that additionally rental yields reached a three year higher to stand at 6%, despite a slight decline in overall profitability versus quarter four. Um, loss making remained minimal at just 4%. Perceptions of increasing tenant demand remain high, standing at 31%. Around one in three landlords have had a recent void, remaining largely unchanged versus quarter four 2020. However, the typical void duration continues to be high at 102 days. Now, I think before we go into this, it's probably just worth um, stating that this is covering off quarter one 2021, so January to March, and we're now obviously in June. So this data is quite old, and you know the world has moved on significantly since then in terms of things over opening up um you know we've really sort of come out of almost lockdown since this point so the sentiment will have moved on again since then but i still think it makes really interesting so to go through each region i'm just going to cover off the key points so first of all east of england their average um yield per property gross yield is 5.88 percent the average gross rent per property is 6,241 pounds annually now landlords in the east of england um 23 percent of these guys reported an increasing uh, tenant demand 36% had rent arrears in the last um, 12 months, 29% had a void, but actually their um, optimism had increased across all of the five key indicators. In the East Midlands, the average yield is 6.3%, the gross rent per property is £8,116 per year. 33% increase, uh, reported an increase in tenant demand, 38% had had rent arrears in the last 12 months, and 39% had a void in the last 12 months. Now for the East Midland landlords, um, there was a slight reduction in confidence across um, the key indicator areas, um, despite them achieving a higher than average rental yield. Um, actually, these guys are the most profitable landlords, so 86% of landlords in the East Midlands actually report making a profit on their portfolio, um, but still their um, kind of sentiment towards the market was um, slightly down um, across just one point compared to the last time they did the survey. Now in central London, the average yield is 5.4%, the gross rent is 9667. 37% of landlords in central London had reported rent arrears, 39% had avoided in the last 12 months, but actually confidence had increased across these guys um, in four of the five key indicators, with just 8% reporting a rise in tenant demand. Now I'm really confident that when we come back to this report uh, um, at the end of the next quarter, that will have increased significantly. We are really hearing very strong and good news stories about the central London market really starting to pick up um, but this is what was going on you know almost three months ago. Now in outer London your average yield was sitting at 5.7% your gross rent um, was £9,188 per year. Um, rent arrears 41% of landlords had had something like that in the last 12 months and 33% had experienced some kind of avoid period. Now, 25% of landlords operating in outer London are ex uh, seeing a demand in tenant increase. And actually, just across all of the five key indicators, the landlords in the um, outer London area are feeling incredibly confident. Moving on to the northeast of England now. So the average yield is sitting at 6.6%. The average gross rental yield is £6,607. 47% um, of landlords in the northeast had experienced rent arrears in the last 12 months. 39% had experienced some kind of void period, but 37% of landlords there are seeing an increase in tenant demand. Um, now, what the um, Mortgage Works went on to report is that tenant demand is up and rent arrears is down. So actually, this is really supporting growing confidence for investors in the North East. Northwest of England, average yield is 6.1%. Gross rent is 5957. Um, arrears in the last 12 months, 46% of landlords had had something like that. 36% had had a void period. Um, the increase in tenant demand um, is seen across 27% um, of landlords. The southeast of England, the average yield is sitting at five and a half percent. Gross rent is um, eight two one seven. Um, thirty eight percent of landlords had had arrears in the last twelve months. Thirty five percent had experienced a void period. Thirty five percent of landlords here have seen an increase in tenant demand. And again, in this area, optimism had increased um, across all five key indicators. Um, no, most notably, in the expectation of capital gains, which has seen an increase of eighteen percent. Now in the southwest, the average yield is sitting at 6.7%. The gross rent is 8,735. 
Um, 37% of landlords in the southwest had experienced rent arrears, 29%, which is incredibly low, had had a void period. And 39% of landlords are um, seeing an increase in tenant demand. Now, um, these landlords are the most optimistic in the UK, and I suspect that really sits around their absolutely amazing rental yields, um, their low voids, and obviously they've got a really strong um, perception of increase in tenant demands there. Wales has, has an average yield of 6.3%, gross average rent is £4,866 um, per year. 44% um, of landlords had had experience rent arrears in the last 12 months 39% had a void 46% are seeing an, are expecting or seeing an increase in tenant demand now landlords in Wales are the most pessimistic in the UK with their average sorry they're confident below average across all indicators and mortgage works um, surmise that's probably down to the fact they have the highest level of rent arrears in the UK the West Midlands are now seeing an average rental um, yield of 5.9%. The average rent is 5653. Um, arrears were um, reported by 44% of landlords in the last 12 months. Voids were at 36%. Um, tenant demand is seen as um, sitting at 33%, which is a decrease on the previous quarter. So what this means is that less landlords are seeing or expecting an increase in rent tenant demand than they were in the previous, um, yeah, previous quarter. And their confidence had increased on four of the five indicators. Now, interestingly, the West Midlands was the only area that had seen a higher um, level of divestment than investment. So 9% um, of landlords had sold property in the last um, three months versus 7% who had actually invested. Lastly, the Yorkshire and the Humber, the average rental yield here is sitting at 5.7%, the average rent 6674. Um, arrears were um, seen by 45% of landlords, voids at, of 33% of landlords, and 33% of landlords are seeing an increase in tenant demand. Um, now, in the Yorkshire and the Humber, their rent arrears sits higher than the national average and their yield is lower than the national average, which is at 6.6%. Sorry. Um, so, yeah. I'm not quite sure what's going in the Yorkshire and the Humber in terms of their um, rent arrears being the highest. But, you know, I think, um, you know, looking at the numbers, um, obviously, like I say, you know, this is all kind of based on the previous quarter. Um, and I do think this will have changed. Well, it'll be interesting to see, won't it, um, how much this has changed next time this report comes through. But I just thought this made some really interesting reading, particularly for those landlords who are potentially looking at investing in an area that they may not have done so before for the first time. Um, this kind of information is gold dust, actually. So I hope you found that helpful. And that is everything for us this week. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us, having a watch or a listen. Um, have a great rest of your week. We'll be catching you next time. But in the meanwhile, if you do have anything you'd like to have a chat about, we would absolutely love to hear from you. 0345 345 6788. We'll have a look at our website. Enjoy the weather. I hope it continues on this vein. If we carry on like this, I think actually all of us may not be so disappointed to miss out on our holidays overseas this year. Well, that's a total lot. I will be totally devastated to miss out. But anyway, let's look at the bright side. I will catch you next week.